I know you want to leave me, but I refuse just to let the farm go. If I have to beg and pee for the stay on me, I don't mind, but I don't want to leave here. Ain't too proud to beg. Sweet farms, please don't let us go, don't you know? Bum, bum. My name is Sean Brown, but they call me Maybon. That's representing my grandmother that lived here and did a whole lot for the farms. If I turn around, I can point it to you. I did that Eaton Road right there, 1217. They, they demolished my home for the new rebuilding of uh, Berry Farms. It makes me feel a little sad because it's like my history being uh, taken away from me. Growing up in the farms was really, really, really wonderful. It was, it was, it was fun. See, I was a, I was a, a little skitty scat. I used to run around. You, if, you, if you didn't catch me, you were in trouble. My mother came in 1962. When we got down here, everybody welcomed her with open arms. You can leave your doors open. Today I moved out. Ooh. I look back at it as, as I'm, 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 I'm leaving home, but I, I wasn't going to leave home because I know I'm just coming back. I'm gonna always come back. Looking at it right now, I'm, 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 I'm trying to picture how it's gonna look. And I'm hoping some people that moved out get a chance to come back. We know the future by the past. Berry Farm is one of DC's most historic black communities, originally founded just after um, emancipation by the Freedmen's Bureau. They not only uh, built their houses from scratch here, but they built the whole community. They built churches, they built schools. This legacy of that community sort of carried on uh, into the 20th century with the development of the public housing. The three parallel streets that go through Berry Farm are remnants of the 1867 Freedmen's Bureau communities. And the names um, of abolitionists these streets are named for. By 1950, there was no junior high school east of the Anacostia River uh, that admitted black students. Uh, the schools were all segregated at that time. when a brand new junior high school opened nearby for white students, they showed up at the door and demanded to be admitted. And this was sort of the beginnings of a case called Bowling v. Sharp that ultimately went to the Supreme Court as a companion case to Brown v. Board of Education, resulted in the desegregation of schools within the district. It was important that a DC case accompany Brown v. Board of Education because uh, DC is not a state and therefore not necessarily subject to the 14th Amendment. Stevens Road is the area that is the subject of the landmark nomination because a lot of um, the, the plaintiffs in Bowling v. Sharp lived along Stevens Road. That includes Adrian and Barbara Jennings. So the Jennings sisters, they lived right through this path here in the 1100 block of Stevens Road. D.C. is known for the Washington Monument and the you know, Smithsonian Institution and the Mall and the, and the Congress and the White House. And we should not be playing our, a, a role in the diminishment of the local history as just as significant as any of those federal places and those federal monuments. This was the place for for slaves during the Civil War to come. So I think that for uh, the legacy of this particular area in Southeast, this should still be that particular place that people should be able to come and live. And it shouldn't be based upon your income. 
Declaring Berry Farm a historic landmark will ensure that our history is remembered, that our stories are told, and that we will see our reflections in this community for years to come, despite the fact that so much of what has been familiar about D.C. has changed around us. Berry Farm is historic. The only question before us is whether you, Historic Preservation Review Board members, will give it the landmark status and recognition that it deserves. Thank you.